Hi everyone, Kim from Dorothy's Daughter here. I am enjoying some time with family down in Texas and thought I would bring some videos back that have been requested over and over again. So what I have for you today is my pants series in its entirety, all six parts. So that's been highly requested, probably my most viewed videos of all time. So enjoy and I will be back with you live next week. Take care, God bless, happy Thanksgiving. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. If you are looking to take your sewing to the next level, you are in the right place. We're not just a channel, we're a community of sewists. I not only put videos up, instructive videos, inspiration videos, and whatnot, but we also reach out to each other and are a growing community of friends. So you're in the right place if that's what you're looking for. But the biggest exciting thing today is that we are going to demystify fit. That is my number one goal for this year for this channel is to help you demystify fit because I believe it is common sense. It is not hard. We make it hard because we overthink it. Um, there are a few issues that can be tricky, but it's not hard. We are 3D object and we have to learn how to fit something around a 3D object. And so it's basically you let out a little here, you take in a little here. It's not as hard as it Most seems. of it is learning about your body and not being afraid to read the numbers right and not being afraid to speak numbers that you think are too large or too small. Um, just that is what it is and then you just have to if you make clothes that fit you will look good I believe that with all my heart if you make clothes that fit I'm gonna say it again if you make clothes that fit you you will look good okay I totally believe that um, we talked a lot about you know choosing patterns for your body type and I said it then and I'll say it again fit is key fit is key Okay, so I'm going to teach you and hopefully we'll teach each other because I don't know everything. Um, we're going to teach each other how to demystify that scary thing called fit. And we're going to start with the scariest thing and that is pants. A lot of you have said you would like to know how to fit pants. So today I'm going to walk you through measuring and all the different measurements that you need to go ahead and um, adjust a pattern, okay? So for today, that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot of measurements, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. And then I'd also like you to, um, before next week, have some uh, muslin fabric gathered and whatever pattern you choose to do. Now, I'm going to use the Duets by Love Notions. And um, I'm just using that because it's a pattern that I happen to like a lot and it's very simple. So whatever pattern you choose, I would suggest that you choose something simple. Now it can be a woven or a knit, um, but it needs to be something with no fly and you know no advanced kind of things like that. A side zipper is okay. Uh, elastic waist is okay that doesn't really make that much difference but make sure that it's something simple okay and then the other thing is don't start with jeans okay just don't I mean it's just because you have to make adjustments on every piece and so while we're starting out let's just keep it simple and um, I was also going to tell you if you're stuck on which pattern to use you can use the duets like I am or you can watch Karina's video from this past week she did five easy pant videos she and I have been talking about the series that we're both doing and it it kind of um, we kind of unintentionally um, lined up on the same time and um, but we decided to make the most of it and um, I'll refer to her and um, likewise so I would just suggest that you watch that video because she outlined five different patterns that you could use to start easy pants all right so we're gonna go get right to that and I'll come back and talk to you a few minutes after okay so we're ready to measure for pants 
So I have a couple of uh, pieces of elastic that I use to mark where to measure. And these are just quarter inch elastic that I tied in a loop and I use them from time to time. Because of my microphone, I've slipped them over my head already. So I wanna use this first one to mark where my waist is. Now, where your waist is can be a mystery. Some people think it's the smallest part of you. Some people think it's at your belly button, um, which I think is pretty close to reality. But what I really think is your natural place, when you go to put your hands on your hips, where do you put them? Um, if you are standing like this. To me, that usually marks your waistline. So that's what I use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure my waist now. And right now I have a lot of clothes on and microphone wires and stuff, so I won't use this. Uh, mine is normally about 39, and I get about uh, 41 and a half right now, but I have some clothes on. So. Um, so that's your waist. You want to mark that down. All right, and then the next place you want to uh, measure is your hips. All right, so now your hip line is just the largest part where it, you stick out here. So you want to make sure it's not down on your legs, but just the largest part of you here, um, including where your belly sort of sticks out. All right, so I'm going to measure that. Sometimes they say your hips are nine inches down from your waist, but I think that varies with different people. All right, and right now I got 49 there. The next measurement you're gonna to wanna to get is your crotch rise. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark, bend in half, and just slip the uh, elastic band right at the point where you bend. And then make sure it's straight all the way around. Now I don't have a mirror, so I can't really adjust mine, um, but you make sure that it's where it needs to be right here, okay? Um, if you have a buddy, they can help you make sure that that is indeed where you're bending, okay? Now, uh, what you wanna do is go from your waist down to that, all right? We will call that rise, all right? So for me, that's very short. <laughs> Most people, it'll be, you know, eight, nine, 10. Uh, mine is only like seven, so I have a very short rise. All right, so the next one you're gonna need is your crotch depth. And so what you wanna do is you wanna put your uh, tape measure right at your um, center front of your waistline. And what you wanna do is thread that underneath, go from the center front of your waistline to the center back. And that is your crotch length. All right, all right, so then you mark that measurement down. And now the next thing you're gonna need is your thigh circumference. So you're just gonna do right at the thickest part of your thigh. And you might want to measure both because sometimes we are different on each leg, all right? Um, and if you do have different ones when you're adjusting a pattern, I would suggest using the largest um, to make sure that you have enough ease in your pant legs. All right, then you want your knee circumference. And again, you can see on me, I have one knee that's way larger than the other. So I usually use this measurement rather than this one, just to make sure I have enough ease. All right, so you have your thigh circumference, your knee circumference. And now what you're gonna do too is you're going to go from your waist to your knee. You're gonna write that, that measurement down, okay? <clears throat> and then you also want your calf circumference. All right, and then your inseam. Very difficult to do for yourself. You can do this one of two ways. 
Um, if you can't do it to yourself, what you can do is you can find a pair of pants that are, you love the length of and you can measure the inseam on those. Or you can have um, your husband or a friend help you measure the inseam. All right, now to just talk a little bit about crotch curve. All right, so uh, you probably, we will not use that in the beginning um, until you go to make corrections on your muslin. But now for your crotch curve, if you have a flexible ruler like this, you, it will really go a long way to help you um, troubleshoot your uh, problems with your crotch. So what you wanna do is take a rubber band and just tie it or put it somewhere in the middle of the ruler, okay? Now you wanna take that rubber band and you wanna put that right on the seam where your leggings are or whatever, uh, wherever your crotch seam usually is. Um, if you put on a good pair of leggings, you can usually do this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this at my belly button or at, the, at my waist. All right, then you, you're gonna bring the back up and around all right, and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that it's molded to you, okay? Okay, then you're going to gently step out of it, keeping the curve. I, I don't step out of things too gently. And you have your crotch curve, okay? And so this can be used then to make alterations on your pattern. You can see the way mine is. I'm very slanted with a higher back rise than the front. Um, so that causes issues for me, and I know exactly what I need to do to fix them. Um, but that is going to be very telling for you if you have a flexible ruler. And you can get those on Amazon, and I'll put a link down below to those. All right, so those are the measurements that you're going to need to um, get on yourself of four pants. So hopefully you now know where to start with your uh, measurements. And um, you can go ahead and just jot all those down on a piece of paper and choose your pattern and grab some muslin fabric. Now muslin does not have to be real muslin. It can be anything that sort of mimics the look and feel of your fabric that you want to use. In other words, if you are going to use a knit for your final pants, then you would want to pick a cheap knit, either thrifted uh, clothing or Walmart sometimes has super cheap knits. Anything like that that you can grab um, off of the you know, dot clearance at Joann's or whatever. Um, just anything cheap that you're not going to care about if it doesn't turn out exactly well. Now sometimes muslins end up being very wearable, so um, I don't necessarily wouldn't just throw that idea out. but. Just make sure it's uh, something that you don't care about. Now, as far as woven, you have more options. Um, you can use any old woven fabric that doesn't matter anymore. It can be an old um, bed sheet. That's what I use. I have a box of bed sheets that we don't use anymore, and I use those. Um, it can be. Um, it can be just some old fabric that you've had, and you have no idea what to do with it. Um, can be stuff you've picked up at a garage sale, whatever. Um, but don't go out and buy expensive muslin fabric because honestly, it can get a little pricey. So if just use what you have, okay? Just make sure if, if you're sewing a knit that you have a knit to do your muslin. If you're sewing a woven that you have a woven because that will definitely make a difference with fit. Okay, that is all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will be back with the next video. We're going to go ahead and take these measurements and transfer them to our pattern and see what adjustments we need to make. But I hope then the following week is that you guys will have sewn your basic muslin uh, bottoms and that you have um, sent photos to me of problems. So we're going to look at some problems and we're going to try and fix them together. So this is going to require you guys um, sending me some photos. Um, that's one of the reasons I started the Facebook group is that's another place that you can send me those fit photos. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to read those wrinkles. We're going to learn how to adjust that crotch curve. Uh, if you get that right, 
you, if you can even just kind of in your have in your head what that's supposed to look like for you, you can take a look at a pattern and know that you're going to have to make adjustments. Okay? Simple, simple, simple. It really is. Most of these fixes are just if if this happens, you do this. But did it. That's it. So once you learn that on one pattern for yourself, you will always be able to make perfect fitting pants. Okay? Um, you might find an oddball pattern out there somewhere, but for the most part, you're going to be able to look at a pattern and know right away whether that is going to be a good one for you or not. All right? Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you soon. Uh, Sunday, we're going to chat at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So I'll see you then. And um, in the meantime, um, gather your muslin materials and um, have them ready to go next week. And happy sewing! As we left off last week, we had done all of our measurements. And there's one thing I neglected to tell you, so I just want to make sure that I get that out there, is that the rise can be measured a bunch of different ways. I showed you the method where you use the band and go from band to band. Okay, it's valid. Um, but there's also a couple other methods. One, you can sit on a hard chair and measure from your waist to the chair. That's another way. Or if you have an L-shaped ruler, you just put this between your legs and then measure your eyes this way. Okay? Um, this is probably the most accurate, though, honestly. But um, any of those ways works. Okay? If you want to, do it. Uh, compare them and do an average of the three. <laughs> that works, too. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is um, we're going to then compare our measurements um, to the pattern that we're going to use. Now, there's a thing called ease, and I, I know I'm probably telling you something you already know, but just in case, um, I want to talk about ease. Ease is, well, for example, if you just made a garment that fit your measurements, and didn't add anything to it, you would not be able to sit down, you would not be able to move your legs, you would not be able to bend your knee, you would not be able to do any of those things. So because of that, you have to have what's called ease, and that's just a little extra for movement. So in a pant uh, pattern, what's generally recommended is about one and a half to two inches of ease in the hips. Okay, so, and then you want about one inch in the crotch length. So um, keeping that in mind, you'll look at the finished measurements of your pattern and compare them to your measurements and that's how you'll know um, whether or not you have enough ease, okay? I'm going to go straight to the other camera angle and walk you through how I uh, made the pattern for my very first muslin. I am actually going back to square one and doing these duets again because it's been a while and I've changed my measurements some. And believe me, I think it's a good idea to just do that every now and then. Just go back and um, because we learn, um, we learn from wearing the garments that, hey, maybe I should have had a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Um, so it's good to just revisit it every now and then. Okay, so I'm going to begin to show you how I choose my size that I go ahead and print out. And what you can hear, <laughs> if you can hear in the background, I apologize for the noise, but I'm actually printing the pattern as we speak. Um, I have made these trousers a zillion times, but I decided that I am going to go back and do this whole process again for your benefit, but also for mine, because every time you do this process you get a little bit better at it so I just really encourage you and suggest that um, you just go back to square one every once in a while and um, check your fit alright so what I want to point out is this is the duet trousers from Love Notions and of course you can use any pattern you want um, but this is meant for either knit or woven and if you, if you are um, on the edge and you're using a knit you should size down but what they have um, said as far as ease goes is that we want one to one and a half on your high hip and two to three inches on your hips they don't give a waist here because these uh, pants sit on your high hip area 
All right, so what we have here, my waist is 39 and my hip is 47. So I'm going to go to my full hip and see that I'm between an 18 and a 20. Okay, so my high hip is 43 inches. So really this 18 is pretty close. Um, so when I look here at what the finished measurements are, um, 49 and it, uh, that gives me, the 18 is 49 inches, that gives me almost two inches of ease. So I think that I'm gonna be okay. Now let's look at the rise. My rise is eight and a half, and this is nine and a half. So I already know that I'm going to have to uh, adjust the rise on this pattern. So we will do that. That's the front rise, and the back rise is 16 and a half. So in order to measure the front and the back, um, that's when you take that curved ruler or something, and remember how I had you put the rubber band there? And so you can measure you know, from your waist down to the rubber band in the front and from the rubber band to the back. And then you can use these um, measurements, finished measurements to um, adjust. Now, you want about an inch total ease um, in your rise all the way around. So if you take that whole crotch length, you want there to be a good inch of ease for wearing, okay? All right, so I am going to cut the 18, and I will probably grade out to the 20 in some areas. Um, but I want to kind of look at the pattern itself and see what the thigh circumference is and um, all of that good stuff. All right, I'll be back with the pattern. So here I am with the front piece of the duet trousers. Now a word about um, cutting out the pattern pieces. Um, there is a curvier shaped waistband um, for the duets. So if you uh, tend to be a pear shaped person or um, just have a lot of curves in your hip area, you're going to want to use that one um, just to point that out. All right, there is also a tapered leg uh, piece that I'm going to put on here as well. All right, so um, I'm going to look at the finished measurements and see what I need to change. So my hip is 47. That is plenty of ease for my taste. Um, I will see how the muslin is, but two inches of ease seems like pretty good to me. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the hip to knee. So I'm gonna measure from this triangle here down to the knee, and that is about 16 and 3 eighths. All right, so my hip to knee is 15 and a half. I need to shorten from here to here, okay? So I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular to the grain line. Let's see if I have a colored one, that would be better. I use this green so it stands out a little better. And sometimes I find little places that I didn't tape very well, which is just fixable. <laughs> so between the hip and knee, and um, I'm going to kind of go in the middle and I'm going to go perpendicular to the grain line and I'm just going to draw my own length and shorten line there and we'll come back to that in a moment. Now I want to look at the rise. Okay, so the rise, the finished rise, front rise is for size 18 is nine and a half. It's sort of close so I think what I'm going to do is make my muslin, if it's within, you know, a margin, I would make the muslin and then see. So that's what I'm going to choose to do with this uh, front piece here, okay? Now I'm going to go um, thigh circumference, so I'm going to go like the, the uh, largest part of my thigh here, and mine was 25. So this is 13 and a half minus the seam allowances. And then I'm going to have to measure the back piece as well. When I'm going front to back, 
I also want to make that same length and shorten line on the back piece. So I'll just kind of line these up to see where that is. I'm going to kind of make a mark here. Then I'm going to make that same line on the back piece, making it perpendicular to the green line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll be shortening that in a moment. All right, the next thing I want to look at is the calf circumference. I want to do the tapered leg, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach this tapered leg piece to the trousers. And then all you need to do, if you want to go back to making the straight leg, you can just uh, fold that back. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this up and out of the way. So that I now have a, a tapered leg. Okay? Alright, so now I'm going to check my knee circumference as well. And the reason I need to do that is because that's a unique challenge for me. I have a one knee that's very large. Okay, so I have a knee that's 21 and a half inches. All right, these triangles here are the knee. So I'm going to go ahead and measure. Okay, so the circumference of the pattern is 22 inches, and my knee circumference is 21 and a half. So that is not enough for uh, ease. So I want at least an inch of ease. Uh, One leg is much smaller than that. But I definitely want to um, just go based on my largest leg. So I need to add um, about another inch of ease to this. So I'm going to be adding a quarter of an inch to each uh, side of the knee. And I'm going to do the same to the front as to the back. Right at the knee. Now we're going to look at the calf. So my calf measurement is 18 inches. Let's see how large the calf is on this. I'm going to say it's right about, the fullest part is just about there. All right, we have nine and three eighths there. apples to apples here. We're going to go down. Uh, let's go down maybe three and a half inches below the knee. All right. And we have, here we have uh, nine and a half, nine and three eighths. All right. Here we have down three inches. Here we have Ten and three quarters. Okay, so we have nine and three eighths and ten and three quarters. We have seventeen and seven eighths altogether of circumference there, and that's not enough. I need to add an inch, um, and I'm just going to call it. So we've, you know, we've got that extra eighth of an inch, but I'm going to go ahead and just add. Um, an inch of ease, so that means I need to add um, I need to add a half an inch on each of the pieces, each side of each piece. Definitely don't want to do this when you're in a hurry because you'll make mistakes. All right, so now I'm going to redraw this line. Now, I didn't measure my ankle, which I probably should. If I want a true taper, if 
probably should measure that ankle. Let me do that and make sure that I have the right ankle circumference. Half. I measured my ankle circumference and it's 10 and a half. Okay, so what I'm going to do then with this piece. I'm going to measure what the ankle circumference is. So I'm going to, so I've got an inch hip, or it has an inch hem, so I'm going to go up from there about an inch. And I have eight there. And on the other piece, about eight and a quarter. So 16 and a quarter there. The total circumference of the finished garment here is about 13 and uh, three quarters inches. So I, that part is okay. All right, so I'm gonna redraw these lines. I have a curved design ruler. This is a good time to get one because it's definitely gonna help you true up these lines. And sorry, I didn't have enough um, paper high enough for the, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my curvy ruler and I'm going to draw new cut lines, okay? So I'll go here, go out to that line, into this one. And then it's kind of a straight taper from there. So I'm going to go at it really gradually. down to down to the bottom okay I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now I could never go buy tapered pants and um, have them fit me correctly because I would always that always ends up with me not fitting in the pack of me. So this is going to be a wonderful thing for me. Make sure you can see. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw the curve. And this one's kind of more, more of a straight because it's on the outside. So I'm going to kind of go straight here for a little bit. Up to that mark. I'm going to start tapering. And all the way down. So you get the idea of how we can um, customize that taper the way that you want it. Okay, now we still have to take out the amount of from hip to knee. All right, now my hip to knee was 15 and a half, as you recall, and um, the pattern, it is 16 and a quarter. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to line this up until I, I'm going to pull it apart until I get to my measurement. don't have to take very much out, but I think it'll make a big difference. All right, there's 15 and a half. Let me just make sure that it's all lined up properly. So I want to make sure that the grain line still lines up. Measure it one more time just because I messed with it. Fifteen and a half. Okay. All right. I'm going to tape that down. You can see most of that went to the inner part. Your thigh. actually I'm just 
just going to take a small piece of tissue paper so I can true up those lines. When you true something up, check all you're really doing. It, I used to wonder, oh, I'm going to do that wrong. There's, you know, they don't really give you instructions for how to true something up. But basically, you're going from known point to known point. So you know this is the point here, and you know the knee is here. So I'm just going to make that, um, make that trued up with my ruler. And um, I know that it will be good. All right. Now, I, what I have just done to the front piece, which it looks like quite a bit actually. What I've just done to the front piece, I'm going to also do to the back piece. But I have one more thing to do, and that is the inseam. My inseam is 26 and a half thereabouts. Um, I usually shoot for about 27 and then adjust from there. So what we're left with here on the inseam is about 30. So I need to take three inches out of the uh, length. So I'm just going to go ahead then and adjust for the length of it. All right, I need to take three inches out of the length. So I'm gonna overlap these by an inch and a half. Let's take an inch and a half out. Keep the center lined up. All right, that's about right. I'm gonna tape that in place. Lots of tape for these things. <laughs> All right, so now um, you just true these lines up a little bit. There's not really that much you have to do in that regard, but just a little bit. All right. Now I have my front piece ready to go. So I don't I don't do anything with the pockets um, at the muslin stage. Whatever I adjustments I make to the pants, I will also make to the pockets. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, cut this out from, from here, from my muslin. I'm going to make these same exact adjustments as I made to the front, I'm going to make to the back piece. And then we're just going to kind of see um, what, how the fit is and go from there. So um, basically, um, when I make my muslin, um, I don't put a zipper in. Um, you can baste the zipper in if that's what you want to do. Um, but what I do is I just take the fabric and fold over the seam allowance and press it really good. And then when I put them on, I just go ahead and I pin right where that seam allowance, you know, right where it's folded. And then I know how it's supposed to fit. I either pin it or I just go ahead and I baste myself into them. And, um, and then you can make whatever adjustments you need to make. All right, so that is um, the beginning of the pant fitting. So go ahead and make your muslins. I know there's gonna be lots of questions. Um, that's one of the reasons I set up the Facebook group. Also though, please do also ask in the comments because those help the channel grow. All right, I am going to um, go ahead and leave you at that. Just remember that you made these adjustments to the front. You also need to make them to the back. All right? Um, as far as adjusting the rise and that sort of thing, unless it's really, really off, I wouldn't do it just yet. I would make the muslin and see how it goes. Okay? Um, so that's it for today. It's a lot, I know. <laughs> but go ahead and mull that over. Uh, go ahead and make your muslin. Take pictures. Um, what I'd like you guys to do after you get your muslin um, put together, go 
go ahead and upload some pictures either to the Facebook group or email them to me. My address is, is down below and we will go from there and um, we will help each other read the wrinkles. Okay? So we are on lesson three today of making pants that fit and I'm going to show you my muslin process in just a moment. Here's what I'd like to do. I've been going back and forth in my mind as to how I was going to show you all the various possible edits to a muslin um, that you would have with pants. And what I decided to do is I'm going to show you what I have to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of videos that goes through all the different um, edits. And I'm actually going to show you, I think, on miniature versions of a pattern um, so that I just don't waste all that paper. And then um, I will be able to um, show you all of them and not just what pertains to me because I really want to help everybody, not just people who look like me. So um, I'm going to do that in the next upcoming videos. I'll probably do three uh, issues per video until I run out of things that I know about. And also, in the amount of time, when you make your muslin, if you would please go ahead and upload them to the Facebook group or email them to me and I will bring them up. And if you'd rather not have your name attached to it, just say so. Okay, it's fine. Just say, you know, Miss K, if, you know, if your name was Kim as well, you'd just say Miss K or whatever, or, or I'll just say a viewer or whatever. I don't have to say your name. And because I know it's a little intimidating, believe me, I, I know how intimidating it is to have your rear end on camera, <laughs> but I do it for you, okay? Um, so I will, um, they don't have to say your name. And um, I'll go ahead and show you the wrinkles that that person has and then show you what I would think would fix it. Um, because that's how it's really going to help. And I really want to help all of you and not just uh, people who have easy fixes and not just people who look like me. Okay? All right. So I am going to um, show you a little, some pictures and a video of me in my muslin. And then I will take you through the edits and then I will... Um, just say a closing couple things. All right, so first of all, I just want to say about muslins. So when you make a muslin, and I forgot to point this out in my video, but I had already checked it, so I'm going to point it out to you now. When you make your muslin, make sure that from the pattern piece, you mark your hip and you mark your knee so that you can see if they line up properly on you, okay? Um, that's really important because if you don't have this hip to knee right, that can cause a lot of issues. Um, most of my issues in the past have been that, all right? So, because I have very short legs compared to the rest of me. Um, so make sure that you mark those so you can double check that those are in the right spot. Also, um, as you're making changes on your muslin, make small changes. Don't, you know, carve out a huge giant mount and then it's gone and you have to start from scratch. Just take little bits at a time or add little bits at a time until you get it right. It's not an exact science. Using a crotch curve is definitely not an exact science. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, also, make a full length muslin because how your calves sit in your pants make a difference all the way up. So if you have large calves, it's going to affect how they lay going all the way up your leg. So make sure you make a full length muslin. Um, even if you don't intend to make full length pants, at least you'll have the, the pattern corrected for that when you want to. Also, whenever you make a, an adjustment, to one piece, you have to think about any other pieces that it attaches to and whether or not you need to uh, make that change on them as well. For example, if you make a change to the front, you're also going to have to change the front pocket pieces. But it's pretty simple to do. Um, but just to let you know that that is something you're going to have to consider. Now the crotch curve. And I showed you in the upcoming clips how I used it, but let me just say a note about that. So
so this is kind of kind of been out of shape now but my crotch curve was something like this and when I laid it on my pattern this was way pronounced over what was on my pattern the crotch curve is a reference it's not exact I tried to make it exact once with horrendous results okay you can't just lay your crotch curve down and make your pattern that way it just doesn't work so what you need to do is use it for trends so you can see ooh, and you'll see an example of that real good example of that when I'm doing my um, edits on my muslin because or when I'm doing my changes on my pattern because um, I have a real a sort of scoopy low butt and I wouldn't have thought that um, by the wrinkles but you can see that the crotch curve shows that I do so uh, what you want to do is just look for those kind of trends and then just make small adjustments don't lay this down and think that that's going to be the, the exact silhouette of your pattern because I don't know why but it doesn't work that way um, I wish it did but for me at least it hasn't maybe for some people you've had luck doing that and if you have I wish you'd share it but honestly it's not really um, an exact thing I that's how I I was so frustrated with using a crotch curve until I realized that you don't just trace it out and trace that onto your pattern it just doesn't work that way um, maybe if you could be super super exact and not you know bend it at all when you're getting in and out um, I just think that by nature of the way that the shape is and the way that you have to kind of get it off your body and it's over top maybe of clothes um, there's just so many factors so just get the trend and then you know, it'll help you know what needs to be adjusted all right that's how I use it anyway um, and there might be other people who can show you how to do it with an exact measurement but honestly I have tried that and it does not work all right so I'm going to go straight to the um, video and show you all the different changes that I needed to make to my muslin and um, I will be back after that with a few closing words. So I have made my muslin, all right? So what I've noticed is that um, I need extra room over here. This did not quite give me enough room in the hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark from there to there that I need extra room. All right, and um, otherwise on the front, pretty good. In the back, I have the sway back happening. Um, and these wrinkles, these wrinkles here, this sway back, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna mark how much I need to pull that in. All right, so that is my muslin. So I, the adjustments I need to make. All right, so um, I have taken my muslin off, okay? And um, I know what adjustments I need to make. All right, and I'm gonna walk us through that. First of all, I'm gonna lay my pieces together, making sure that the grain lines are perpendicular and just overlap the 5 8 seam here and this is my crotch curve okay so I have done my crotch curve and I just want to take mine and compare and see you can see that I need to you can see that I need to extend this quite a bit and maybe scoop it a little bit. All right, so that's how you use your crotch curve. Not so much to get exact measurements, but just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So this needs to be extended and possibly scooped a little bit here, okay? So I'm going to take, at this point I'm not going to do anything to my front piece, 
Um, in times past, I've gone ahead and done, shortened the front rise a little bit. Um, I'm not getting that this time, so I'm gonna wait and see how it is, but because this is something you can even do uh, while you're in the middle of making pants. What I would do in that case is I would take my curved ru ruler and I would just go down as much as you need to and then just taper it back to the side seams. Um, I'll go ahead and do that on this piece just so you can see what I mean. So I would just go down however much you need to go down in the front and just find the right amount of taper there and then just taper that right back to the side seams so that you're not um, you're not that way so that you're not uh, interfering with the side seam okay and then of course you're gonna have to make that adjustment on the pocket as well all right now the back piece I have some issues so on the back piece in order to get those wrinkles that were underneath my bottom out and match my crotch curve better, so I'm just going to take a small piece of paper and I'm going to extend this out about maybe a half to three eighths to a half of an inch. Um, just start with a little bit and then you can um, always add more. But I'm going to extend that out. Maybe not quite that much. So I'm going to extend that piece out a bit. And then if you notice my crotch curve, I had quite a bit more scoop to the bottom. All right, I'm not gonna do that much because it wouldn't fit right then. But I am gonna just scoop it a little bit just to match my curve a little better don't need very much really a little bit makes a big difference so I'm just gonna scoop this out a little bit more all right now what I want to do is I, I took away about a quarter of an inch on this seam so I need to add it back so I'm going to um, add that to the sides which I already needed to add to the sides and on my muslin I marked the place where it didn't come together very well I don't know how I uh, ended up with that being too tight but I'm on steroids right now. I have a feeling that might be why. So it was right here at the hip line that it started. So I'm going to go ahead and add. If I added a quarter of an inch, it would add a whole inch. Um, and I did take away some there. So I think I'm going to add about three eighths of an inch and just see. Because um, if you add too much, you can always um, take it away uh, when you try on your pants the first time. So I took out a quarter of an inch right in here, which is going to fall right at the hip area. So I'm going to add that back over here, and I'm also going to add the amount that it wasn't uh, it wasn't quite <laughs> wide enough. So um, I'm going to take out, or I'm going to add about a quarter of an inch to the hips, Again, yeah, need to come down a little bit lower. Okay. 
So I'm going to add like a quarter of an inch to the hip area. And, um, and then I'm going to also add back the quarter of an inch that I took away here. So I'm going to add about a half an inch altogether at the biggest point. And then it really wasn't tight in the waist, so I kind of tapered it back for the waist. All right, so I've got here, and I actually will smooth that out with another small piece of paper. By the time I'm done with patterns and muslins, the, there's so much tape and extra paper on, on them, I usually will end up just tracing them with tracing paper when I'm all done, and that way you know it's uh, going to be better. All right, so then I'm just going to true that up. Alright, so I've added a half an inch over here. Not quite. I need to do just a tiny bit more. So there is my new hip line. Now, just a, as a uh, just as a review, when I scooped this out, I took away some that would be actually in the hip. So I added that over here. Plus, I added the amount I needed to add because it wasn't fitting properly. So there's my new. Now the other thing I need to do with the back, so I address the wrinkles and I address the uh, tight hips. Now I need to address the waist, the gaping in the waist. So I went ahead and I had pinched this out. So I'm going to measure how much I had pinched there. Which was... So I'll measure how, how much I had pinched, which was a good half an inch. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, take up a quarter of an inch on each one of these darts. So I'm going to add an eighth of an inch on either side of each dart. So that will be a, a half an inch total. So what I'm going to do. I'm adding a quarter inch to each dart. So what I'm going to do is just do an eighth on this side and an eighth on this side. So there. And there. So an eighth of an inch on either side of the dart. All right, so that will bring the back a little flatter. All right, now because I did that on the back waistband, all right, so on the curviest part here of the waistband, I'm going to cut from the bottom up, I'm going to cut two, but not through that line, okay? And since I had added a quarter of an inch to each side, and this is basically uh, this is just one side of it. I'm going to overlap a quarter of an inch. You see that? It's a quarter of an inch overlapped. And tape it. And then that will match the back again. Alright? So I've addressed 
several of the issues and I still have one more, okay? So I've created a new dart, so I got rid of the gaping. Transferred that to my waistband. I added this little extension to take care of the wrinkles under my bottom. Because the shape of my crotch curve was a little scoopier, I scooped it out a little bit. Well, I hope that was a little bit helpful seeing how I went about the process, although I know your body is not going to be exactly like mine. So we are going to each have our own individual struggles. So I just showed those ones that pertain to me. Now, in the upcoming videos, what I want to do is take the other ones and do about three of those per video until I run out of edits. And um, hopefully we'll cover everyone's, um, as I explained before. So um, it'll probably be over the course of about three videos, and I'll try not to make them too far apart, although, you know, I do want to give a little bit of breathing room in between each one so that you have time to sort of absorb the information. It'll probably be over the course of the next week or so that I'll have all of those up. If you like the shirt, the cut file that I used to make the shirt is available on Elliot Mac. And um, if you have a silhouette or a Cricut, you can download the uh, cut file and make one yourself. What I did with this one was made a stencil and used fabric ink paint because I like the look of that more than vinyl. So, so I hope that helped um, and I hope that over the next week or so that you all will be able to um, find what will work for your body and um, don't be afraid to make another muslin after you make some suggest you know make the suggested um, edits because um, you'll want to check them. Um, I know my body, so I don't feel like I need to do another muslin, um, but it will be worth it to you if it's your first time. It will be worth it to you to go ahead and make a second muslin. All right. And so what I'm going to do today is show you how to fix rise problems, first of all. So if you have um, a short rise or a long rise um, and you need adjustments to them, um, I will be showing you how to do that. And I'm working on smaller size patterns so it's not uh, to scale, <laughs> um, but they're miniatures so that I can print more and show you uh, instead of wasting a ton, ton, ton of paper. So um, the first one that I'd like to show you is if your rise is too long. Now the, if your rise is too long, what you're going to have is a lot of pooling of fabric in, uh, both in the front and the back. Um, you'll have some sort of baggy wrinkles going on. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fix the rise that is too long. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to see how to fix a rise that is too long. So we need to make from here to here shorter. Okay, so here I have two pant pieces and um, they are shrunk so they're not really to scale or anything but I can demonstrate the technique anyway. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to draw lines along the green line and then I want to draw one perpendicular. And the reason I want to do that is so that when I pull these apart I know I'm lining them back up the right way. All right, so what I'm going to do is somewhere in between the waistband and the crotch, I'm just gonna draw a line, okay? And I'm gonna do the same over here. Kind of make an H and then that way, you know that you're getting them lined back up the right way. All right, and just do oh, that wasn't good. Sorry. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just cut those apart. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlap them by however much I wanna shorten the rise. Now the amount that you do, obviously this won't be to scale for you, but um, the amount that you wanna do is maybe like, you kinda, you kinda can pinch you know, 
on your what what looks good and then kind of try that but I wouldn't do too much at a time I would start off with like maybe half an inch and then um, go from there um, if that doesn't feel right you could go more and more but go in small increments so you don't end up with um, a rise that's too short all right um, typically I have to do mine about seven eighths of an inch that gives you any clue all right so you've overlapped them there and we're going to do the same thing to the to the back only you may definitely want to keep it to the same amount front and back so that your seams will line up okay so that is shortening the rise and then what you're going to do is you're going to true these up so you're going to want to take your curved ruler and just redraw those lines so that they're back in there, okay. All right, and same over here. Definitely use your curved ruler for this, all right. And that is shortening the rise. Okay, now let's talk about if your rise is too short. Now if your rise is too short, what you're going to have is some sort of vertical wrinkles and it's going to be real tight. Um, maybe it doesn't come up and quite cover the whole back. Um, it's going to be quite uncomfortable. And sometimes this is difficult if you don't have the waistband on yet. So I suggest when you make a muslin that you sew on at least one half of the waistband so that you can get a feel for um, where the pant is going to fall, especially if you have a molded waistband like the duets. So if you haven't done that already, for sure you're going to want to sew your waistband on. All right, so let's go to the video and I'm going to show you uh, what you should do if your rise is too short. Pattern here. Now we want to lengthen the rise, okay? So we're going to do the same process we did there. We're going to draw this green line, we're going to do like an H so that we have two lines we can line up. And if you ever don't do this and then you try to line something up, sometimes it gets real confusing. Um, it might seem like, why would you do that? But trust me, it does help when you get in a bind. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a, make a slash somewhere between the waistband and the crotch, we're gonna just draw a line. Do the same thing over here. All right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut those. And then what you want to do is you want to split them apart. So you'll need some more paper. Obviously, I'm doing it in miniature here. So, um, but you're going to want to split it about as much as... You're going to want to split it as much as you need to. Again, start with a small amount. Um, you know, maybe start with a half an inch or, and obviously this is not to scale. So um, maybe you want to start with half an inch or seven eighths or three quarters or something along those lines. And um, you definitely don't want to lengthen it too much or you'll get the opposite problem. And then make sure that those lines line up. Same thing with the back. I'm gonna do some paper there. Same amount as you did with the front. I'm not measuring. This is not to scale. So, um, but you want to make sure these lines line up. All right. And then you're gonna do the same thing you did when 
we shortened it, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use this curved ruler, which this is a mini one, but you've all seen my big one by now, and just true up the seams, okay? And do the same thing over here. All right, and that's how you lengthen the rise. All right, and um, so lengthening the rise um, you need to do when you have like, and when it's pulled tight, you can tell when the rise is too tight. That's a pretty easy one. So now in the next case, um, we have a rise that is too short, but only in the front. So what I'd like to do is show you how you adjust one, but not the other. It's tricky because you don't want the side seams not to line up anymore. So I'm going to just demonstrate that to you now. Now I want to show you what you do if you have one rise shorter than the other. So typically, for me, um, I have to shorten my front rise and not my back rise, okay? So the back rise will, will stay the same. These are not to scale, so please apologize, I apologize for that. So the back rise would stay the same, but I would want to lower the front rise. So what I would do, do this, is you can just cut a line across, but don't go through, okay? Just leave a hinge there, and you can just shorten it this way by just um, overlapping that just a little bit, and then you've shortened the rise in front. Um, that's kind of a lot there. Um, since these are miniature, I don't have to do it very much for it to simulate um, the real thing. So series. Today we're going to talk about adjustments that you make on the front of your pants. So it's kind of reading the wrinkles on the front side. Um, Rather than trying to bombard you with all the different adjustments in one video, I tried to break it down into smaller chunks um, because they're not that hard to understand. And they totally make sense, and that's why I want to teach them to you um, with that in mind so that you understand why we're doing it and not just, oh, I need to cut this, cut that, and that's, um, that's how I make room for this or that. Um, when you can see why, I think it's easier to remember how to do it. So, um, I have four adjustments for you today from the front of your pants. But before I get to that, I would just like to say again, thank you so much for all of you for watching, subscribing, commenting. I feel like I have friends all over the world and it's an amazing thing. And I hope that you feel that way too. Um, a lot of questions um, are kind of coming this way, especially about pants and different things. Um, please keep your questions coming. Um, be patient with me. I'm trying to get to all of them um, as soon, quickly as I can. Um, if you want to ask them in the Facebook group, that either in the comments or the Facebook group, that way others can see the answer. And then if you email me, that's fine. If you'd like have pictures and you really don't want to show anyone, you can email me, that's fine. Um, but if you don't mind showing your photographs to others who are going through the same thing, then go ahead and send them to the Facebook group so that when I answer the question, everybody gets the benefit of hearing the answer. So the very first adjustment I'm gonna talk about is a super common one and it gets joked about and it's the last thing you want someone to look at you and see when you're wearing a pair of pants and that is a round pubis or it's commonly referred to as camel toe. I hate to even say that on the air but you know uh, <clears throat> nobody wants to see that. It's characterized by sort of vertical wrinkles right there at the crotch and it kind of separates it into two which is why it's called um, the toe. <laughs> Anyway, um, I am going to go straight to a camera. It's a super simple fix and show you the fix. 
Okay, so the first adjustment I want to show you is for a round pubic area. And that is, um, you can tell that by just some kind of unsightly wrinkles around the pubic area, and it's commonly referred to as camel toe. <laughs> so um, nobody wants that. So if you are experiencing that, um, the way to fix that is to just scoop this crotch curve out and give your pubic area a little bit more room. So just take your curved ruler and let's see, I need more curve here. Just take your curved ruler, kind of scoop that out more. And that is how you fix that. And how much, uh, I would just do a tiny bit. A lot goes a long way. Um, I would maybe come down about a quarter of an inch or, uh, or a half an inch at the most to start. And then, because you can always go more on your muslin until you get it right. So that is how you fix the um, round pubic area or it's commonly referred to as camel toe. And nobody wants that. All right, so as you can see, there's no reason that you have to go around looking like a desert animal. It's really, really easy fix. All right, the next one is actually the opposite of that, and that is a flat pubis. So what that is, is you end up with like extra fabric right there at the crotch, and it's kind of horizontal. And um, it isn't a lot, it isn't wrinkles really, it's just sort of horizontal fabric right there, and just real locally in that area. And um, the fix for that is pretty much the opposite. So I'm going to go to the other camera and show you how to fix that. Now the next adjustment is for flat pubis. And so the way that you would see that is just some extra fabric right there in the crotch, kind of a little horizontal uh, area, if you will. And so the way to take care of that is we have to make this curve. It's just the opposite of the round pubis. We have to make this less pronounced. So you're going to add some paper behind there. Hopefully you can still see that, okay. I'm working in miniature again. I'm trying to save paper <laughs> so that uh, we're not lessen my footprint, I guess, because that would be a lot of paper if I printed these out this many times. Okay, so that is your normal curve there. I just traced it so you could see it better. So for the flat pubis, what you want is this not to be so steep. So what you're going to do is kind of make that a little less steep, something like that. And again, a little bit goes a long way. Like maybe start with a quarter of an inch and see how that is, okay? And that is for your flat pubis. So the next fix that I have is actually also another common one, and it is a full belly adjustment. Many of us in our postmenopausal life um, need to do this uh, with our pants and um, kind of what that ends up looking like is just taut across the belly and kind of wrinkles in all different directions kind of like radiating out and you want to like give more room to that so that you don't have those wrinkles and so that they're comfortable and um, look much better in the tummy so that is a simple fix and I just encourage you to watch and when you do it the first time go slowly because even though it's a couple different cuts and you can get confused um, I'm going to try and show you the reason why which will help you remember what direction those cuts will need to be I actually have done this before and cut the wrong way because I wasn't thinking about what actually needed to happen so if you watch this I tried to explain that hopefully um, you'll get a grip on how to do that. And it's super easy. It's just, um, it's two cuts instead of one. So I will go to the camera to show you that. The next um, adjustment we're going to make is for a full belly. And 
basically it would just be kind of taut across your belly and you have kind of wrinkles going in all different directions. So that would indicate that you need a full belly adjustment. Now, what the way you do this, it, it seems complicated, but if you think about it, it just makes sense. So what you want to do is you want to make a hinge so that you can make more room for your belly. Okay, so you're going to draw a straight line across somewhere on the like fly area here. You don't want it to be on the curve and you don't want it up too high. You want it kind of right where all the fullness is. All right, and then you're going to draw another line straight down uh, perpendicular from the waistband. Okay, now what you want to do and this just makes sense, all right? You want to make more room here, right, on your belly. So you're going to cut across this line so that you can have a hinge. Don't go through it, just all the way to it, all right? So we're going to spread that so that you can make more room in your belly. You see how that will make more room? All right, but you got a problem here because now that's going that way. So then what you want to do is you want to cut this one down and make another hinge so that you can even that out and true that up. All right, don't go through there either. All right, so you're spreading that and then you're going to go ahead and straighten that um, out again. Okay, and that is basically how you do that. So you've made your hinges. So you're just going to take your pattern piece and put it on a piece of paper. I used a different color here so you could see what I was doing, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to spread that then. So you're making room for your belly, just like I showed you a minute ago. How much kind of depends on how much room you need. Um, I would start again kind of small and you can always uh, make another muslin, although that does involve another muslin this time, but um, I would just wouldn't do too much. Um, I would just start with uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. Maybe that's where I'd start. All right. And then you see we have that kind of looking like Pac-Man there, but we have to even this out. Otherwise, we can't true up this line. See how that does not meet up anymore. So you have to then hinge that so that you have a normal looking fly again. And then you're able to true up all these lines. All right. So then what you want to do is you're also going to have to edit your waistband to add in this little bit here that you added to it. And that's how you do a full tummy adjustment. It's really not as hard as it looks. If you just think about the common sense is you need to spread it open. So you're going to cut it to hinge it, open it up. But then you have to do this so that you can make the fly straight again. And that's, I say fly, I know there's no fly in these pants, but uh, I mean the fly area, the, the uh, center crotch seam. And then you'll just go ahead and cut that out. Here's your new pattern piece. All right. And then the last one I have for you today for the front is um, when you have knock knees. Now this is a reason why I tell you all to make a full length muslin. Um, because the wrinkles can happen um, in your knee area and just above that are totally dependent on your entire length. And if you don't make an entirely length muslin, you will not uh, have the benefit of knowing that that's there. Uh, if, you, if you have experience in the past where you didn't have this problem, then maybe you could get away with um, doing just a shorts muslin. Um, but you really need to do the whole thing. And I, I didn't grasp that myself until maybe a year ago, that you really need to do the whole muslin. I have the um, one I'm going to show you next time, which is the prominent calf. I didn't need to fix it on the duets, but like on the Sabrinas, I have to fix that. Um, where I have sort of prominent calves and my knees are kind of hyperextended, so I get those horizontal wrinkles in the back, which I'm going to be showing you that next time. 
but um, if I didn't make a full length of muslin, I would not see that. Okay. In fact, I had a pair of pants the first time that I noticed that I had a pair of Sabrinas that I just cut off into crops because the wrinkles were so bad. And when I cut that calves away, imagine that it went away. So um, you do need to make a full length muslin. All right. So I will go to the camera and show you how to fix the knock knees. The last adjustment for the front is for knock knees. And this is why one of the reasons why I tell people to always make a full muslin, um, if you ever intend on making full length pants out of that pattern, you want to make a full length muslin because things that happen down here can really affect the wrinkles up here. And knock knees is a good example of that. Okay, so the way you fix knock knees and get rid of those wrinkles around your knee is you're going to make a couple of horizontal lines right here at the just in the uh, upper thigh area. Same over here. All right. So then what you're going to do is you're going to split the entire thing apart. But don't separate it okay so what you're going to do is you're going to kind of pivot this piece and this out seam so the inseam will get larger so that your knees have more room down here that'll get larger and this will overlap okay and that's how you fix that this is a little bit exaggerated you probably don't proportionally need quite that much but that is how that's done. I'm going to show you on the other piece as well so that in case you missed that there. Okay, so here is your new pattern piece. You can see this is overlapped here. So you can't really hinge it because you want these to overlap. All right, let's do it on the back now. I'm going to cut all the way across. And you're going to want to do the same amount on the back that you do on the front. So uh, definitely, definitely kind of measure or at least eyeball how much you did on the, on the front. All right. So you're going to spread it at the inseam. I kind of pivot at the green line here is what I do. Spread it at the inseam, which overlaps it here at the outseam. Okay? Can you see that? Spread it at the inseam, and it's overlapping at the outseam. And what I do is I kind of use my green line as a pivot point to do that. You don't want them to be apart all the way across, all right? And I didn't measure, but you'd want to do this the same amount on the front as the back. And this will, this will fix your knock knees. True this up. You'll notice that the You'll notice that sometimes you'll have jagged lines, you know, where the line won't be straight anymore because of pulling it apart. And what you want to do is you kind of want to draw it in close as you can, kind of true it up, keeping in mind that you're, you want the fullness in your hip. You don't want that to go away. Okay. And that's how you would fix those. So those are some simple ways to make the front of your pants look better. <clears throat> All right, so by now we've been working on the fronts of our pants and there's a lot of problems that have crept up in the back. And in order to um, fix those, um, we need to understand what the wrinkles are telling us. And basically, they're 
very difficult to decipher sometimes in the back, especially because you see wrinkles under your bottom and there's about four different reasons for them. So I'm gonna try and go through them and sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes an adjustment, you might think it's something and it doesn't really make that much difference. So you can either try more of that adjustment or you can try a different one, okay? So the first one uh, really bugs me because <laughs> it happens to me in, it's happened to me in ready to wear my whole life. It also happens a lot of times with my patterns. And what that is, it is basically from prominent calves. But you know those diagonal wrinkles that you get in the back. Um, and they just, you feel like if you could just fold that up and take that away, that they would just lay better back there. Do you know what I'm talking about? That is from prominent calves. And it seems so weird that the adjustment is way up here for the calf, but that's how it is. So I'm gonna to cut to the camera and show you how to fix that. And um, hopefully this will help you out a lot because I know this has made a huge difference for me. First one I wanna show you is um, for prominent calves. And it doesn't even seem like it should be from the way that we're adjusting it, but it's those diagonal folds that you get um, on the back of your legs. And I get them a lot and I never knew that it was from my calves. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Um, what you're first gonna do, so what you're first gonna do is you're gonna draw a diagonal line from the inseam to the outseam at a diagonal kind of the same diagonal as the folds are back there. Basically what you're gonna do is take out some of that fabric that's bunching up. So you're just gonna make a line here and you're going to leave this one hinged. So you're actually going to cut in this direction. All right, leave this as a hinge. Somewhere from the crotch curve, you're gonna go ahead and make another cut this time this way and leave a hinge here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Working in miniature again, so <laughs> hopefully this works out that you can see. Um, so I'm going to but not through, making a hinge there. And I can't See, if I, if I just took out the extra there, um, I would have all kinds of problems with this being crooked up here. So I have to make another cut from here to the crotch seam and make a hinge. So once you make those cuts, then what you're gonna do is you're going to fold it over so that you can take out some of the uh, wrinkle there. Uh, what has to happen though is this has to spread a little bit so that you can true that line up, okay? So we'll put some paper back here, all right? And let that split and how much we're gonna take out, all right? It doesn't have to split a whole lot right here. Now this looks like a whole lot of difference, but it actually in when it's not in miniature, it won't be that much. So we'll true that up. And then the other thing you wanna do, you need to measure how much you overlapped it there. And I'm gonna use this to kind of measure. Okay, so I've got this like a quarter of an inch. Obviously this is in miniature, so it's gonna be way different. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna add that on to the top. So you're gonna add whatever you overlap so that it's the same as it was. You're gonna add that quarter of an inch back to the top. Okay, and then you're just gonna tape everything down really good. And then true everything up 
curved ruler if you need to. This is pretty easy to do. And this, right, like that. All right, then you're just gonna go ahead and cut that out and this will be your new pattern piece. So to make you understand it, basically the first cut, this cut that you made is so that you can overlap it and take some of that excess back here. That's what causes those diagonal lines um, that people get back there. And so that's something you're gonna have to do. Whoop. Yep. And you can't do that without doing this split here and hinging it so that you can bow it down and have this line be trued with the rest of it there. And then you have to add whatever you overlapped here, you have to add back onto the side seam because otherwise it won't match up to the front side seam. And that's basically how you do that. And then that takes out all that full, extra fullness back there between your basically your butt and your knee is kind of where I think it normally is. It's usually down here around the, um, the back of your knee, but I get it sometimes it's just like this. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of people that walk around with needing to do that. <laughs> the next one I want to show you, it isn't necessarily wrinkles, although it can be. It's usually done a lot of times in combination with the gaping waistband, uh, but it is the sway back adjustment. So in this next clip, I'm going to show you how to fix that without disturbing the waistline. Now, can you cheat <laughs> and just take a little bit out here? Yes, you can. And I do that a lot. Um, if everything else fits okay, that's perfectly fine to do that. What I usually do if there's darts though, is I'll sort of distribute it three ways. Uh, one for each dart and one part for the back seam. And then that sort of distributes it a little bit better than just taking the hunk out of the back. All right, so you can do that too to have fix this way back. It's not really the kosher way to do it, but sometimes if everything else fits okay, it's perfectly fine to do that. But here's the right way. <laughs> the next one I want to show you is for a sway back. And it's actually a really pretty easy fix. What you're going to do is just uh, cut a diagonal here up to the side seam and hinge it. So go two but not through. This is your hinge right here. All right, and then you're just going to overlap that some so that it brings the, the, the sway inward, which is what you want to do. See, you notice what happens here when you overlap that, it comes closer. And then once you do that, you have to redraw this curve. So again, you need a piece of paper back there. So we're just going to slide some paper on there. And remember, when you redraw a curve, you go from known point to known point. And try to follow the same curves as much as possible. So we're going to draw that. And we're going to go right up along there. And there we have our new curve and it is a sway back fix. Now sometimes when you have a sway back, let's see, sometimes when you have a sway back, you also have a gaping waistband. So I'm going to show you how to curve the waistband as well. And that will be next. So this is for a sway back. The next one is for a gaping waistband, and we all know what those are like. And so it's like when you sit down and, you know, you have extra space for a tool back there. <laughs> it just gaps out, and no matter what you do, it won't go flat against your back. You need to curve your waistband more. So I'm going to cut to the camera and show you how to curve your waistband. Now, when you have a gaping waistband,
you're just going to take your curved waistband and you're going to make just a couple lot different lines on here right at the curves maybe where the curves are the most prominent okay now you're going to cut these curves you don't want to disturb this because it's going to be attached to the top of the pants so you don't want to make any changes uh, necessarily to that all right but what you can do is cut down here and down here and leave a hinge here and a hinge here so let's do that and I'm trying to bring it closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing all right this is a waistband and remember it's cut on a fold so you'd be making this adjustment before you cut it out all right, then you're just going to overlap it there. And you're just going to kind of see how much you need to do by measuring your, uh, your waist. I wouldn't start with a whole lot. Just, you know, do a little because you can always untape it and do a little more. And then just overlap the second one. And then you have uh, made a curved, a more curved waistband. Okay? That's how you fix a gaping waistband. The next one is for a flat seat. And those are wrinkles that basically sort of pull down from your hips and um, also horizontal. It just kind of, you just kind of have too much room back there for your bottom. So what you need to do is just take a little bit away. So I'm going to cut to the camera and show you how to do that one. All right. Now another one that has wrinkles under the bottom but this time they're usually diagonal, pointing up and out, okay? And that is when you have a flat seat. And that's very easy to fix as well. These are all, a lot of times these ones on the back are super quick, easy things to do. All right, so with that, you just want to um, kind of take a little bit out of the crotch curve in the back. So you would just kind of mark a little bit. A little bit goes a long way here, okay? And you want to kind of bring that down all the way to the knee as you, as you can. So, um, looking for a good curve here. Just bring that down. All the way. And that will fix your flat seat might this might be a little more um, than you would need again it's exaggerated because it's in miniature um, it would not be taking that much away from your thighs this is not proportional because um, if I took that much on these it would be too tight in the thighs so a lot of times the um, the flat seat and the uh, thighs are real big um, so it, this kind of fixes both all right the next one is for a low seat so these wrinkles are horizontal and they're just up under your cheeks okay they're not pointing down they're not coming down this way they're just kind of horizontal right there at your cheeks and you just need to kind of scoop it out and I'll show you how to do that this would be a low seat now a lot of times this is um, kind of a wedgie and just real tight wrinkles right under your butt horizontal though okay so that just means you need a little more room because your bottom hangs low so all you're going to do is you're going to take a curve and you're just going to scoop that out from there Oops, sorry not drawing very well today <laughs> you're just going to scoop that out giving your bottom more room so then you would this would be your new pattern piece here just cut along the scoop the first line I drew I think was maybe a little too much and you want to come right back to the point at the inseam because you don't otherwise your inseams won't match up okay so I've just scooped that out this is for the low seat adjustment the next one is when you have some butt wrinkles that are horizontal, but then they sort of point up. 
and um, that is from having um, a torso that is larger this way than this way and that causes those wrinkles so what you need to do is add to um, the back piece so I'm going to cut to that camera and show you how to fix that okay now these are some more butt wrinkles um, these are kind of horizontal and pointing down and this is when you have a cylindrical torso and um, basically you need more room in the crotch so sometimes you have to scoop and do this um, but sometimes just doing this is enough um, all you're going to do and I do this routinely on my pants just going to add a little paper here all right all you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to add a little bit extra to that crotch curve in the back see right there let me bring it closer see right there I just added a little extra and then you're just going to take your ruler and blend that in so you're just giving your bottom a little more room and it also releases in the thighs and helps it to hang straighter in the back all right I'll just cut that new line and there's your new piece on that so that was the cylindrical lower torso it's which it's called matching up what it's called in your duet book so that you can uh, know when you refer to it a lot of these are in there not every one but a lot of them are and then the last one is for a full seat for this one you kind of have wrinkles distributed all around and they're sort of radiating out from the middle of the of your bottom just too tight so here is how to make more room for your bum <laughs> now i'm going to show you a full seat adjustment and basically this is going to look the same that as a full tummy adjustment needs to look um, it's, it's just uh, you have wrinkles going in all directions and um, you can just tell that it's very tight okay so what you're gonna do is it's pretty simple you are just going to make a cut right across and then you're going to make this the hinge right here so you're going to cut across that line two but not through and then you're going to split that open giving room more room in your bottom okay so then you would take a piece of paper you would spread that however much you need to again you don't have to this is exaggerated okay because it's in miniature it probably doesn't in, in reality need to be that much you can kind of figure out how much you think it needs to be um, but this is a you know a great way to fix that when your jeans or something are tied in the back and this is uh, the back waistband is sort of too low when you sit down this is another way to fix that okay so then you're just going to true up this line again going from known point to known point which is super easy in this case all right and then we'll go ahead and we'll cut along the line we just drew and we have a new pattern piece that has a full bottom adjustment. All right, okay. so I hope those helped. I know uh, when it comes to adjustments, sometimes it's really hard to know which one to do, especially those wrinkles under your bottom. I think the best thing is to get a second opinion. I think taking a photo of it and sort of looking at it objectively yourself and seeing which way are those really pointing? Are they pointing anywhere at all? Because they're very, very subtle differences. So also you can get clues from the way the rest of the pants fit. For example, if they just feel loose in the back, then you know that those wrinkles are probably from the flat seat. If they feel super tight, then you might have a, you need a full seat adjustment. 
you know, so you just have to kind of be a detective and diagnose the problem. And sometimes you have to rule out one problem to rule in another. So uh, not an exact science, but it does help if you know how to read the wrinkles. Well, I hope that helped you, and I really, really have enjoyed this pants series. Next. All right, have a fantastic weekend. It's holiday weekend coming up. So have a fantastic weekend. I will see you soon. Happy sewing.